How's it going, everybody? So, I've had a couple of commenters over the last couple months mention Ray Pete to me, okay? So, first of all, I have absolutely no personal agenda against Ray Pete. Um, I find, actually, I find a lot of his information pretty useful and beneficial to most people, but I also find some of his information extremely harmful, dangerous, and just outright wrong, okay? So if you don't know who Ray Pete is, you should look him up already. Um, he is a PhD. I believe he has a PhD in, um, in biology, or is it chemistry? And then he had, with a focus in physiology. Um, you, I would think of him as a physiologist. Uh, and he has written extensively on thyroid health, and, and I have looked him up a lot. Like, I've, I've looked into it a lot, okay? So, um, he has, a lot of information on hypothyroidism and how to speed up the thyroid and he's a big advocate of influencing the body's hormones through different nutritional protocols you can think of him as a professional biohacker uh, with a <laughs> with an extensive pedigree in biohacking you can think of it that way if you want to use the term biohacking but it's essentially functional medicine, is what all of that is anyway. Regardless, um, one of his big theories here is that you need dietary carbohydrate in order to convert uh, T3 into T4. So to create active thyroid hormone, he says you need carbohydrates. And he actually advocates the usage of sugar, okay? He says you can use honey, maple syrup, or white sugar. He says basically white sugar is not the enemy. And he allows Mexican Coke. Uh, like if you look at some of their food pyramids, right? There's a lot of people on YouTube who are doing day of eating videos. I highly recommend you look that up. And I've seen one guy who just dumps like a cup of, of white sugar and mixes it with milk, which by the way, Ray Pete says that everybody should be able to digest milk, and he says that lactose is a preferred carbohydrate source. Um, and he says, like, he has this uh, recipe for like a morning milk, where you basically take like a liter of milk, and you mix it with a cup of sugar, and he claims that this is supposed to speed up the thyroid, and he says basically, um, your body temperature, and he, rec he advocates the use of like a thermometer. The, your body temperature is, a sign, is an indicator of your metabolism, and your metabolism is an indicator of your thyroid health. And he recommends you boost the metabolism by consuming cups of sugar a day and drinking liters of milk. He also advocates the usage of orange juice, okay? Like really, everything else in his diet is good except for his his um, acceptance of lots of junk food. Uh, okay, processed, refined sugar, especially. I don't understand that. Um, well, and and I've read I've read what he says. So he believes that you need carbohydrates in order to produce active thyroid. So here's the thing. Um, I don't think carbohydrates are the devil. I think it's pretty clear that refined sugar is bad. <laughs> um, it doesn't make any sense for humans to consume it. We know that there's a, a high demand for vitamins and minerals to be able to metabolize uh, sugar and carbohydrates in general. This is why whole food carbohydrate sources like sweet potatoes contain high amounts of minerals and B vitamins because without those minerals and B vitamins, um, the refined sugar and refined carbs can actually produce a higher demand and essentially rob your body of nutrients. You could think of it. Regardless, um, the fact is there are people who have reversed Hashimoto's thyroiditis and reversed hypothyroidism using ketogenic and even carnivore diets. I cannot even begin to explain how ridiculous this Ray Pete guy sounds when I hear him say that ketogenic diets ruin the thyroid. And I've heard a lot of people on YouTube say this and I wondered where they got this from. And now I know. 
It's ridiculous because if you go on the World Carnivore Tribe on Facebook, and by the way, I'm not a carnivore dieter. I'm, I do participate in ketogenic diets, but I, I don't believe that everyone needs to be keto. I, I think that uh, there's different tolerances for carbohydrates, and obviously the Okinawans, you know, with the greatest amount of centenarians, they eat a lot of fish, and they always have, and if you think they didn't, you're ridiculous. But they also eat a lot of carbs, like 70% of the calories came from carbohydrates, and they live forever, so... Point is, um, I don't think carbs are bad. I'm not biased in that regard, but... Again, I've studied ketogenic diets and carnivore diets extensively, and what I'll tell you is if you go on the World Carnivore Tribe, okay, you'll see, and it's a group on Facebook where there's real people, hundreds and hundreds of people talk about their experiences on a, on, on a carnivore diet. They've reversed Hashimoto's and reversed all sorts of thyroid problems eating a diet of only red meat. Tell me, and, and again, I'm not saying carnivore is, is healthy. The point is, how can your body require carbohydrates, dietary carbohydrates, uh, to the point where you need to be consuming, um, you know, a cup of sugar as a health food, according to Ray Pete? You, do you really need that when there's people reversing thyroid disorders on an all meat diet? When you look at that, Real world example of hundreds of people saying they've reversed Hashimoto's and, and, and hypothyroid, low thyroid. They've, they've regulated their, their, their underactive thyroid eating a diet of only red meat. Why, why in the world would it make sense that you need carbohydrates to produce active thyroid hormone? And again, remember, gluconeogenesis, turning protein into carbs, is a demand-driven process. Your body, if it does produce carbs from protein, it only produces a maximum of something like 30 grams. The reason is it will only turn protein into carbs if it needs it for the brain or if some kind of metabolic process in the body requires glucose in order to maintain homostasis. There is no physiological process that requires dietary carbohydrates to function. There is a few processes that require glucose, but your body can produce glucose on its own. You definitely don't need to be downing um, like tablespoons or cups of refined sugar like these Ray Pete followers do. You don't need to be consuming orange juice throughout the day to boost your thyroid. That's ridiculous, and it doesn't make any sense. Now, at the same time, okay, so I just right off the bat, if you believe in that crap, you're you're crazy. But at the same time, I have to say that um, for an athlete, a lot of his suggestions can be great because athletes can find it very hard to consume enough uh, calories through whole foods without processed sugar and stuff like that. And there's a lot of ergogenic or per performance enhancing effects of consuming sugar after exercise. However, re, uh, watch my video on doing MMA and powerlifting on a ketogenic diet. It's not necessary. But uh, he does advocate a lot of healthy things like eating oxtail and gelatinous meats, um, eating clams. He also believes that omega-3 fatty acids are unhealthy, despite the world of evidence that omega-3 fatty acids are extremely beneficial, primarily in, in fish. He recommends uh, avoiding omega-3 fatty fish like salmon because he says that that's creating heart disease uh, and diseases and messing with your thyroid. But he recommends oxtail and you know a lot of fruits. He recommends you avoid fiber uh, and avoid green leafy vegetables and get most of your calories from dairy and milk. That's what Ray Pete's all about. So I think that I think that you know there's better ways of, of eating if you need if you want carbs you know a primal blueprint diet is probably a good idea um, but uh, yeah a lot of his uh, recommendations and theories I think are pretty bogus uh, when you hold it up to real-world results and even the scientific literature so yeah Pretty kooky stuff. Um, leave your comment, your question in the comments down below, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll talk to you on the next video.